So the next up is going to be Remco and W from the WorldCoin team. They're going to announce something really cool that we're excited to have everybody share here on stage with us. So uh, as they get set up, we'll uh, we'll kick off with this super cool announcement. All right, thank you all. WorldCoin here with an exciting announcement for y'all. WorldCoin is joining the Optimism Super Chain. Now, for those of you who don't know why this is so cool, let me give you a little bit of a backstory about WorldCoin. Uh, we started um, a while back, founded by uh, Sam Altman, who is becoming rather famous right now, to solve the problems that AGI will inevitably create in the world. And in order to address those problems, we really need to start taking serious um, the original promise of blockchain and create the largest financial and identity network, one that is inclusive of everyone. And we do this by creating it, creating an identity network and giving ownership of it to everyone. Now, why now? Like I said, AGI is around the corner. We need to take this stuff seriously, but also we need to have a concept of humanness in the digital domain. Right now, blockchains don't know what a human is. We need this in order to actually work on stuff like UBI and wealth distribution. We need this in order to get governance models that are not purely uh, token-based, but have things like quadratic voting. We need all those things. We need the concept of humanness. And we need to deliver on the original promise of blockchain. The thing that got me excited about the space in the, in the first place, scaling a global, efficient, and inclusive financial system. So how do we do this? Now, getting humans into the digital domain is hard. We've looked at all the options that were there. We've looked at KYC, no privacy. We looked at fingerprints, doesn't scale beyond a million people. So in the end, the only thing that we came up with that could potentially work is irises. So we worked hard on a hardware device that can achieve the entropy that is stored in a human iris. And we now have the orb, which is the only way that we're aware of that can verify humanness at a population scale. What is the orb? I'm not going to go into the details here. Um, you can check out the website. We have a lot of content there, but it is advancing the field of um, iris recognition by a huge degree. And the best part is we made all of this open source. If you are interested in building your own ORP, please reach out because we want other people to build ORPs. Now, of course, a very important aspect of this is that we want to empower the users, make sure that they are in control. So the whole thing is completely private by design. The raw images never leave the ORP. They're only used to process into an iris code. The user's wallet is a fully self-custody wallet and in addition to that, there's a whole layer of zero-knowledge proofs that make sure, makes it such that the wallet can prove that you're a unique human being without revealing anything else about you and even without the ability to link it back to other things that, you ha um, that you've done in the past. So every single action is anonymous on its own right. We recently announced the World app, which is our mobile wallet app designed to be easy to use and bring um, blockchain technology to a very, very wide audience, including everyone. Uh, the last I've heard is that it's actually trending first crypto app right now in the App Store, which is super exciting. The wallet also contains the first implementation of World ID, which is uh, the aforementioned anonymous proof of personhood protocol. With this, you can build things like quadratic voting. You can do airdrops where you airdrop a token over every human on the planet. And we have an SDK for this, which is online, and you can ch uh, try it out and play with it right now. We, um, I think, have an announcement tomorrow about how you, um, how you could do it as part of uh, the Lisbon Hackathon. And we've been running in beta for a while now. We, um, we've signed up over 1.7 million users at the moment, over 200 different ge geographies. And in order to support so many users, we need to think serious about the blockchain infrastructure that we have. We need a chain for a billion people. What does this mean, the billion people chain? We need it to be value aligned. This is a chain that is going to hold the wallets for everyone. So it needs to be extremely secure. We need it to be permissionless. We don't want anyone to have 
any kind of ultimate control over the thing. We need it to be trustless. We need it to be decentralized. We need it to be open source. We need it to be such that it deserves to be the chain where a billion people live on. We also need it to be usable, which means that it needs to be affordable. Right now, only a select few people can actually use the Ethereum chain because the transaction fees are simply too high. It, it precludes too much of the global population. We need a chain where transaction fees are measured in cents or less so that balances of $10 of fewer actually make sense. And most of all, we need a vibrant ecosystem. We don't want something locked down or limited in functionality. We want a place where people can innovate and create. Big things are created together and we need to have a chain that supports both long-term stable projects, but also allows creative experimentation that creates new valuable projects for everyone to use. So almost two years ago now, we looked at what is the landscape, what are our options at the moment? Um, and we made this graph, which is the cost breakdown of the various options we had at the moment. So Ethereum was out of the question, $10 per transaction with a $10 balance is impossible. If you look at what the L2s look like at that time, you'll see that their cost is largely dominated by L1 call data and L1 verification cost. A um, little bit technical, but it means that these are inherent in the design. No matter how much they want to bring fees down, they will not be able to bring it down below that point. You'll also see that there is a tiny little project at the bottom called Hubble that actually has a, uh, it was developed by the privacy and scaling team at the Ethereum Foundation. And it has a very cute design where it sort of takes the best of the optimistic designs and the zero knowledge based designs to create a system that is super efficient. So we went with that as a start. We wrote our own node implementation that we can run our own infrastructure that can scale to a large number of users um, that support se uh, sequencer decentralization and so on. And we ran that in production for a while and actually got it um, at capacity where it was running transactions for less than 350 gas on Ethereum L1, which as far as I'm aware is still the record in terms of L2 gas cost. Uh, unfortunately, Hubble in its design does not have EVM support, so it's very hard to create a vibrant ecosystem there. It's still a cool technical stack that allows you to extend it and add new features, but this is a dead end from our perspective. We want a place where any dev can easily join in and start building and creating applications for the users. Uh, meanwhile, Proto Dank Sharding or EIP 4844 was getting traction. This is a big community effort to make Ethereum the ideal place for L2s. And it does this by creating an alternative, more efficient way to store the call data, which as you saw was a big part of the L2 cost equation. Uh, we joined in the effort and we helped out with the KCG ceremony. You'll see a little screenshot of what it looks like right now. If you haven't already, I encourage everyone to just go to the KCG ceremony uh, website and um, become part of the trusted setup ceremony. Your name will forever be engraved in the world's largest trusted setup ceremony. Also, we um, moved away from Hubble to an EVM chain we use for the beta period. Um, We've looked at how we can best support our users and we decided that Gnosis saves are the best way for our users to keep their funds safe. So we deployed them for all our users. We're now running one point, there, we've deployed 1.7 million Gnosis safe uh, on an EVM chain. We also pay for um, all the meta transactions. So currently in, in, in the app, you're not paying transaction fees yet mostly because we want to simulate what it would look like in a post 4844 scenario where the fees are extremely low and we want to design and optimize for that future. Uh, which meant that we ended up paying 1.5 trillion gas in meta transaction fees for all the actions our users, uh, your users took. And the reason we can get away with this is, is kind of, it's, it's the exciting part of this world ID that we're doing, is because we know that every action is done by a real live human being and not some bot or um, like 
nefarious entity that wants to uh, collect the gas fees. We know that these are real life human beings doing this. So we have perfect civil resistance and don't have to worry about it. Um, but the, now that we're having our launch soon, we need to pick a real chain. And we've decided to launch on Optimism mainnet. Super exciting. Um, Optimism with OP stack and the current backdrop release is already amazing. With 4844 in, it will get um, even better. It's a stack that encourages extending and changing. So in the future, we'll see many more features being added. And we love that with the super chain vision, there is going to be a community of multiple teams working together with a big talent pool to scale the whole infrastructure to a billion people. It is not affordable yet, since we don't have 4844 yet, that will be in the next hard fork. So we'll continue to subsidize the meta transactions with help from Optimism. Now, what are our next steps here? Before launch, we will have to migrate our existing 1.7 million users. They're currently doing 500,000 transactions a week to Optimism mainnet. I think this will be at least a double digit percent increase in transaction volume there. Then after launch, we will onboard a billion more people and we'll start um, becoming part of the super chain ecosystem to work on proof of personhood, make sure that this is a primitive that everyone can use in their apps built there and work on privacy preserving identity. We need to empower identity, digital identity needs to be solved and we need to do this in a way that respects and preserves users' privacy. For this, we are also researching a lot on uh, mobile CK proofers. But that's. Um, but now I would like to ask Matty from Optimism on stage for a quick announcement. All right. Hi, my name is Maddie. I'm the head of developer relations for OP Labs. We're part of the Optimism Collective, and uh, we're building the Super Chain, which is our vision for a modular, interoperable blockchain ecosystem. And I have uh, two things for you today. One of them is this NFT. This is a commemorative NFT that is an open edition that is live now. This is to celebrate uh, WorldCoin's entrance into the Super Chain. It's open for about a week, so if you scan that QR code, uh, that'll take you to the page and you can mint it for free, uh, and you can grab one of those. Thing number two is uh, uh, this thing, this thing we call the Super Chain. It's built on the OP stack, which is a modular open source stack that is ready for your hacking tomorrow. We have several hackathon bounties in ETH Global, uh, both, for, uh, both for building with the OP stack and for hacking identity. So if you're interested in either of those things, so you can find more information on it, the ETH Global website, or just come talk to me. And just come talk to me if you're interested in joining the super chain in general, because the more projects that join, the more, the more who join, the faster we can bring this about together. So thank you. Thank you. Also, if you are interested in working on the super chain um, for, for WorldCoin, or if you want to work on the future of humanness and digital identity on the blockchain, uh, we're currently look actively looking on a protocol team for people who can help out there. Um, please reach out on, on uh, Twitter or talk to us at, the, at our booth here. Um, this was my announcement. Thank you all for listening. And happy hacking.